Christ of him that crieth in the wilderness, repair ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God.
Oh, how wondrous is the path of initiation unto the soul who has accepted the flame of God's own obedient love and has entered into that love which is obedience, truly loving obedience to the divine reason for being of that soul that has heard the call from Alpha, from Omega, the Father, Mother God, and does no longer tarry in the cups of self-will and human pride and going astray from the very formula of the law that is the inner blueprint of one's life. In the day and in the hour that thou dost hear the call of the Guru, beloved, that one who has called thee to the path, even the path of the living flame of love, there is no turning back. The soul can no longer dally the flute of Krishna has been heard and the sound of that love does woo the soul above and beyond all earthly loves. The soul has heard the call and the soul shall listen with inner ear and inner sight following the lead and the beckoning of the one who bestows love for the union of all of one's forces. Yes, beloved, it is one thing to know that obedience to God is achieved only by love and that love is the fulfillment of the law of obedience. And it is another to know the vibration of that love, the quickening of that obedience, the quickening of the power of God that does galvanize all of one's being, repolarizing one's very life to the whole star of being that is the I am presence with each one. God has not left you comfortless. God's comfort is in that presence and in the living presence of Christ born again and again in every heart until the heart First the manger and then the palace of light becomes the dwelling place of both the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son will teach you the path of love. And when you become immersed in that love, in such profound inner joy, there shall come a cessation of idle chatter, of harshness of feelings, sharpness of thoughts, the softening, the tenderness, and the very strength of love. These shall almost surprise you as you become aware that the third person of God does enter with father and son and your life becomes a walk in the Trinity and the Holy Spirit shall never more go out from that point of the inner light.
If you keep the love tryst, if you cherish the law of God as the application of his will and rejoice to fulfill it, how to fulfill the law then? If the will be not heard, it is the listening by the inner ear, the listening to the voice of God. It is to shut out all other sounds so that God's voice resounds within you. And the impelling of love teaches the law of right and wrong and the Holy Christ self so very, very near, yet does remain apart, trying the soul again and again, testing the soul, delivering the soul, refining the soul with refiner's fire. Until the soul does wonder, shall I forever be remanded to remain outside of the door of the heart of my Christ, of my Lord Jesus. Again and again, true love is tested. Again and again, you desire to prove your love again, even as you are reproved by the one who loves you the one who is that guru who does unite you with your twin flame, with Jesus, with Lord Maitreya. The teacher comes, the trumpets sound. The teacher has come to show you the way, to answer the beckoning love of love's own perfect expression of itself. O beloved, obedience is not hard when you have been touched by divine love in a measure, in a measure beyond your present comprehension. Love that permeates all being is first of all a forgiving love. God's forgiving you and your forgiving all parts of life. Forgiving love is a saturating love, a healing love, a love of resolution. O oh, soul who art immortal, know that you may wear the swaddling garment of love you may receive it, for I, Serapis, come. Come as the mediator of that love that may be too tender, too profound, almost to receive and contain. God's love is beyond all of self and selfhood. What need have you of outer self when you are in the beginning with love and in the ending with love and you are in God and in the heart of God and God is in your heart. There is nothing you cannot give away for beloved. You have the allness of the cosmos and you know that in giving of self or possessions, if you have not already given them. You impart some measure as token to those who are yet in the outer circle have not, and have not entered into the fullness of that bliss of communion with the bridegroom who is Christ the Lord. O oh, devotees of ascension's flame, you have known the true love of that flame. You have known of Serapis, 
You have known of the love of twin flames, of the fourth ray, and you have understood the sound of the flame in the march triumphal, in the sweet love call unto the celeste Aida. Yes, beloved, you have seen the merging in the white fire of Luxor's temple, of the white fire body of yourself and your twin flame that shall take place at that date when you are summoned to the return of the divine oneness. You have seen the merging of your causal bodies. You have known the promise of the fulfillment of this path. Therefore, I counsel you, do not desire anything inordinately. Do not entertain any longer inordinate desire, for you remove yourself thereby from the fount of true and living love. Give obedience in little things, for the little matters must be settled, else they will become big fires out of control. Let the little problems in life be seen as significant of the larger ones. And when men ignore the larger problems of a planet in distress, for the smaller ones of inconsequence, they surely do suffer. Suffer the loss of vision and experience a failed test in a schoolroom of life. Let not the larger world view, on the contrary, eclipse the affairs of your immediate circle, causing you to abandon the first responsibilities of life. Thus, from either too close or too far of you, you may miss the point of the practicality denoted by the sand falling in the hourglass, the single grain of sand that you must cast as a diamond ere it fall in that moment of time arrested, eternity waiting, suspension. How long is the suspension of a single grain of sand? Does not the sun stand still for the son or the daughter of God who must weigh the factors of time and eternity to make that split second decision for the right, for the championing of life and truth and honor? Yes. Love is the great synthesizer of all, the fire enfolding itself. Love begets love, the many forms of love that all need, from mercy to chastisement, from firmness unto the beauty of starfire glow. I am Serapis in the newness of love and its fulfillment. I am with you to increase your sense of heaven here below. A circle of light I draw around each one now to extend the borders of your habitation, to magnetize love to your aura that you might become the magnet for love, for giving and receiving love, failing not to remember that love is lost 
when you disobey the first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. This is the first obedience and the first love. Therefore be purged, I say, of lesser loves, that you do not misqualify God's love, but that you enter into it and allow it to translate you again and again and again. Be willing to be translated day by day, to be transfigured and to know that your loves of yesterday are not sufficient unto your loves of today, nor will they suffice unto tomorrows. Yes, beloved, love is eternally new, as the eternally new springtime, as flowers that come and blossom, become immortelles and recycle, coming through time and space again. O oh, great love of God, as thou hast ordained the cycles to give opportunity in this hour to many servants of God upon earth, so I have come to impress upon their souls who hear me not through this messenger and those who do and shall by the recording that that love is for the fulfilling of the whole law. And when the law of love is fulfilled, opportunity opens, and the opportunity to bear greater love of God is surely an initiation. Love must be protected by the call to Saint Michael the Archangel, Love must be protected by the use of wisdom, its exercise for the guardian action of love. The power of God must be wooed and won by you, that that power endowed with God's will shall become the fortress for the sealing of love against the hordes of night who would steal it and pervert it and misqualify the sacred fire and take that divine love to depths where love must not go. So shall there be unto you an opportunity to be all love, but this love shall not affix itself unto you or your aura until you dis demonstrate considerable Proficiency, preferring your calls to Archangel Michael and to the will of God for the protection of the most precious gift of all cosmos. God has sent me to you in this hour as your fellow servant and brother that I might express to you this opportunity to hold love's balance. It is the greatest of all tests of the seven rays, beloved, simply because the forces of darkness would tear from you in any moment the precious love that is unto you, a rare elixir of everlasting life. Just as soon as you are strengthened in light, light and light, as soon as you are firmly on the path, know that God shall give you a portion of love through my hand that will enable you to accelerate on the path in dimensions beyond all prior attainment. Thus, Know the requirement of such an opportunity and an initiation. It is the guardian action, the guardian action of love. May you know it well, 
and soon come to know yourself in the glass as a true reflection of God's love to all people. Would you be the smile and the joy and the gift of love, my beloved, in specific, very specific vibration for each one, a precious love you may impart that becomes an unguent, truly a balm of healing of old wounds and hurts and separations and the losses. Yes, beloved, you can call to the secret love star. It is the causal body, cumulative of all evolutions who have won their victory on your sister star, Venus. This secret love star becomes an action of ruby fire, protecting love, containing love, and multiplying your momentum of love that is yours. Only through the sacred heart of Jesus and yours alone in his heart. Yes, beloved, melt all the world's hate and hate creation with the love of the living Christ Jesus with you and see how the world shall be changed. I commend you to the first steps of love's obedience. Once you have followed these, you will follow all the rest if you truly love. In the words of Jesus, may you love one another as I, Serapis, have loved you as you have come to our retreat to study. So know that some have done exceptionally well and shall enter into new chambers soon, chambers of advanced initiation. By the victory of the one, doors are opened to the many. May you contemplate the one and smile the peace of love.